joined by Ian Anderson, the executive uh, chair of uh, Cicero Global, the political uh, consultants and uh, risk political risk consultants. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good to be here. Yeah, I'm, I, I, as you say, still rather digesting a fairly dramatic uh, exit poll. Um, the polling that we saw earlier in the week was suggesting that there was a narrowing race between Labour and the Conservatives. But this exit poll shows that uh, Boris Johnson looks like he's achieved the upper end of the Conservatives' expectations. It would be the biggest majority the Conservatives have secured since Margaret Thatcher was in power. Yeah, if it, if it pans out that if way. If it pans out. Why? I think that message, which the British electorate have heard again and again and again, get Brexit done, get Brexit done, has appealed to a lot of people. Whether or not you voted Remain or voted to leave the European Union, there's no doubt that politically the country's been stuck for the last three and a half years. It didn't sort things out when Theresa May tried to sort things out by having her general election in 2017. And it appears the message has a, a really appealed to, shall we say, a country that is psychologically felt that it's been in this ditch and Boris has said, we're going to take you out of the ditch. On Wednesday, that poll you referred to came out. When it did, the pound rose. Now the polls have closed. The pound has risen, risen again. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, markets uh, and, and polling are not always correlated. Right. But what we, you know, what we are seeing just in the first few minutes, suggesting an 80 uh, uh, majority for Boris Johnson, um, it is a rise in sterling again. Markets now making the calculation that at the end of January, the psychodrama that's been going on in that building behind us comes to an end. Britain leaves the European Union, but then, of course, it then embarks on uh, the very tough negotiation about the future trading relationship. I was going to say, the end or just the beginning? Uh, this is the beginning. This is the end of the beginning, as somebody once said. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I think we go into a new phase. From a business point of view, and I work with lots of businesses advising them on political risk, Look, I, I think that most businesses didn't want to see us leave the European <coughs> Union, but they've accepted the politics, they'll certainly see from tonight's result um, the very fact that Britain will be leaving at the end of January. I think it will also be met by the European Union uh, and some key European countries uh, with uh, some positivity tonight as well. At least this delivers some clarity. At least delivers clarity, uh, although we're possibly seeing a redrawing of the political landscape. We heard Emma James mention it in her press review a few moments ago. And that redrawing of the political landscape, seats that were red going blue, seats that were blue going red, the country's still bitterly divided when it wakes up Friday morning. Well, let's see. I mean, if Boris Johnson gets the numbers that the exit poll is suggesting, he's clearly eaten into Labour support traditional Labour supporting areas. According to the exit poll, Labour is going down to under, under 200 seats. Now, Michael Foote didn't even um, achieve that back in 1983 when supposedly he composed the longest suicide note in history, the Labour's manifesto in 1983. But look, I think Corbyn is gone very, very quickly. The other really interesting thing about the exit poll is it would appear that the Scottish nationalists are going back to the surge that the created back in 2015, gaining 55 uh, of the 59 seats in Scotland. Now, that will raise uh, once uh, again... Why, why is that? Why is that? Because that, that also goes against the grain of what those last polls were saying uh, in the build-up to this vote. Well, it, it is surprising. Um, you know, clearly there's been tactical voting going on everywhere in this election. It might appear that the tactical voting has cut into the Conservative vote in Scotland more than the SNP. But look, this is, a, this is an early prediction. Let's see how these seats unfold. And we're not going to see most of the Scottish sheets uh, uh, until very early tomorrow morning, uh, if not actually um, also later in the day tomorrow. But if the SNP do achieve this surge, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, the Scottish First Minister, the leader of the Scottish National Party, will immediately 
be calling for her second Scottish uh, referendum. So the constitutional debate in this country uh, will continue apace. Yeah, I think it's important for viewers to, to note that uh, with the Brexit referendum, you had one referendum begetting another one with the first, the Scotland referendum of 2015. In that referendum, Remaining in, in the UK won by 10 points in the end. Yes. And the latest polls, if there were to be another Scotland referendum, show roughly the same numbers. Is there nonetheless the chance that because Scotland is so solidly pro-Remain that Scotland could break off? I think there's a real chance that if, again, this exit poll is right, that happens. Because the central demand of the SNP, if they gain these numbers, will be, we now have a mandate for a second referendum. They are going to ask Boris Johnson, remaining as Prime Minister, to allow them, they need to ask the UK Parliament to be able to have that second Scottish referendum. Uh, the UK Parliament is probably going to resist that, but with very, very few um, MPs in Scotland other than Scottish national MPs, it's going to be very, very hard to do. Their argument is that leaving the European Union which is probably what is about to happen at the end of January, is a fundamental change in the deal that Scotland thought it was voting for in the first Scottish referendum in 2014. So more, if these poll numbers are right, more constitutional agony for uh, the UK to come. And that begets one final question for you. Uh, Boris Johnson, uh, he uh, tacked to the right since he's been prime minister. Uh, as you say, he, he ran on this very simple slogan, get Brexit done, three words. The big tent Conservative Party seemed gone during the campaign. Uh, is it gone forever? Well, I think the really interesting question there is he talked, as, as much as he talked about getting Brexit done, he talked about being a one-nation Conservative. Now... Do you believe him? Well, I actually think when he was mayor, he was a one-nation Conservative. He tacked into a different position during the Brexit referendum. He will have won a lot of Labour constituencies tonight. He's going to have to be a one-nation Conservative if he wants to win at the next general election. All right, and if he wants to get that trade deal done. Ian Anderson of uh, Cicero, the uh, political risk consultants, thanks so much uh, for being with Thank us. You. There, there you have it, Mark. Uh, it's not the end, it's only the beginning. <laughs>